Welcome, everybody. This is the Talking to Myself podcast. Ride along as we cover the topics you've always just kept to yourself. You know, those ideas that surface when no one's around? Yeah, that's us. Here are your hosts, Bryce Prescott and Kobe Sines. All right, it looks like we're rolling. Welcome, everybody, to the fourth episode, episode number four to the Talking to Myself family here. Um, This is Bryce Prescott, your host, and uh, I want to remind everybody we may be talking a little slower today. Uh, A couple days ago, my uh, my boy and co-host here, uh, Colby, uh, decided that he wanted to see how uh, dense his head was and let it uh, hit some tile in my my basement um, one evening as he was uh, hanging out and He's got a nice little gash on the back of his head. So welcome to the gash in the back of your head club, Colbs. That's funny. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Um, oh, he's milking it now. <laughs> I, I'm i not talking slower. Well, at least I hope not. Um, if so, you can just call me radio for the podcast. But um, yeah, I joined, radio, the, I, love it. Uh, I joined the West Walker Club. The West Wal- well, you still have a job, so that's good. You know, so... Uh, Tell tell us uh, elaborate for us what what exactly happened in your in your blurry recollection what was going on? Um, I was battling the flu last week and unfortunately um, went to take a piss around four o'clock in the morning and rather than sitting my ass down I decided to um, like a girl I mean yeah pretty much <laughs> um, I decided to black out fall faint, whatever you want to refer to it, and crack my head on an entry step into a shower, and um, when I came back to consciousness, there was nice little puddles of blood around me, and I cracked my head open about a good seven centimeters. Well, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm glad you're okay, and it's it's nice that, uh, that the timing of this worked out, because we postponed recording our fourth episode because you were feeling sick, and so you came over for us to, you know, kind of help out and get you some some uh, soup and whatnot, and and uh, now that we're having our, this is our relationship uh, podcast, or one of many that we will do, and so it's kind of funny to consider that none of this would have happened to you if you'd had a girl at, back at your place that could have helped you out a little bit, giving you some food and taking care of when you were sick. Some TLC. Um, hey, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I've got open enrollment right now. <laughs> All right, ladies, you heard it. You heard it first right here. Open enrollment for the Colby Science University. All right. Well, um, Everybody, this uh, this this podcast today is uh, it's a special one. And uh, before we get into some things, I, I want to introduce our guest today. Um, this person uh, is by far the mo- my most favorite person in the world. Uh, she's a gifted cook. She's an incredible mother. She's a close friend, and she just so happens to be my wife, Amy Prescott. You know, um, I met Amy. Gosh, when was it? Thirteen years ago or so. We were both in the mortgage business. And uh, I I was always impressed by the way she handled things. She was just the consummate professional, but yet easy to be around, easy to talk to. Um, Fast forward 13 years, and uh, her and I have had, uh, we're coming up on 10 years uh, next year for our our wedding anniversary, and we've had the ebbs and flows of a a fun and eventful marriage. Um, We decided to have her on the podcast because... um, her perspective as a woman obviously is incredibly valuable, but she's also seen many facets of relationships, both in our own, her own, and uh, been observer to several of her close friends and family. And, and so we thought that, you know, she would, uh, she'd be a value to hear anything you, you'd like to add to that aim as far as your uh, perspective going into this. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's pretty much, you know, how it is. We, uh, as a couple of, over the last year or so decide or acknowledge that we don't really have any other couple friends and it's cuz <laughs> relationships fail miserably these days for whatever reason and so it's nice to be able to get it out there as a woman and maybe help some of these men know how a woman works and what doesn't work and maybe you know get you guys on track for how to have a healthy <laughs> relationship yeah no, i i <laughs> I, I, I can definitely attest she is smarter than your your average female and I think guys would probably value her help because she's been my therapist for a good while. <laughs> well, whether you value it or not, you're getting it today. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Amy, for, for being a part of this. I know that just on the backside of this, it's been kind of a, 
uh, a fun thing arranging everything to where we're all able to do this and handling kids and everything and just like just like you are with everything you were champ at getting getting the time free to be with us so we're we're thankful for your your participation let's uh let's jump right in um being that this is the you know our, our first podcast talking specifically about the dynamics of relationships and marriage and commitment and single life and all that that jazz you know we wanted to talk about kind of just to lay the groundwork about some of the effects that have happened in our society specifically of our culture religion history all how this has had an effect on relationships and the status of where things are at today and more specifically how it applies to us here in this room and applies to the listener that's out there so i I pose the question to kind of start with you, Amy. What what do you consider? What is a definition of a good relationship? Oh, that's a loaded question. I think that it takes two people, first of all. I mean, a lot of people nowadays go into relationships thinking, you know, what am I going to get out of this rather than what am I going to bring to this relationship? And I think that that's where a lot of people fail. You know, they don't go into it with an open heart. They're selfish they're you know looking to gain rather than to share and you know I know so many I mean like I said we have no friends who are in a healthy successful relationship and it's it's kind of sad you know that that's where it's going like marriage as a unit isn't valued anymore you know it's more of like an inconvenience or you know people just don't respect what marriage has to offer and that's it's just unfortunate. I mean, not that our relationship is perfect, but I think that we both go into this, you know, trying to better each other and better ourselves and, you know, grow. And I think that it takes a lot of work, but you just have to be willing to do it. And, you know, that's kind of my take on it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it seems, you know, you, you actually answered the next question. Colby and I were talking a lot about this over the last weeks, preparing for this about how, difficult it is for a good relationship to flourish and how hard they are to come by. You know, we've got, uh, right now it seems that we're in the, uh, I'll call it this, the Tinder stage of dating, you know, every it is a bit of a, a background for the listeners. Um, it, for my, I, I will own my own perspective. Every, everything that's going to come out of my mouth and my perspective and opinion is based on an idea that the pinnacle of humanity, the pinnacle of life is family. It's a committed monogamous relationship with someone to which there's a passionate connection and that involves the everything is about the day to day. So the, the 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 top of the the top of the mountain is when relationships on point and all those other items of balance that we've discussed in other podcasts are on point because the relationships are on point and in addition to being that the relationship is on point your body, your relationships, your spirit, all that. And so my opinion the the basis of my opinion is that the decision that's going to put an individual closer to that ideal is is the better decision. So I know we're going to get other you know takes on this, and you know my boy Colby here has been single for a while, and and he's got some he he's right in the middle of of this this uh, this state of affairs for relationships nowadays. Um, just for the the, the list, or Colby, give it give us a little bit of background for you as far as you know what what. Uh, what is your opinion and, and definition of what a, a, a good relationship is? Or does that even exist for you anymore as far as your ideal? Is that well, a I unicorn? Mean, I, I think at least for me, um, relationships have been, um, I haven't had a plenty or had, a, I guess you can say, even a really good one to, um, that comes to memory. I, I Unfortunately, I know my longest tenure relationship was has been about maybe six months. And... Um, as far as my history or what I've seen as far as relationships go, um, I've, I've had a couple of relationships that I know within my family that have lasted quite a long time and are still together, but I'm not very close with those family members to really say that I understand, you know, what that looks like or how that is. But from the family members that I am close to, um, I, I mean, there really hasn't been a healthy one. I, I, my dad and my stepmom have been together for a long period of time, but that's even a complex one. And that's my dad's third marriage. Um, my mom has never remarried. My grandma never remarried. Um, the men on my mom's side of the family are what you would consider players. Uh, don't want to <laughs> get married, multiple kids by multiple different women. It's, you know, so for me, a relationship is kind of like this, 
um, this Greek God that I choose to believe in, you know, of Zeus of like hoping that, oh my God, this is a possibility, but it's, and prior to meeting you guys, it never really existed. But I mean, I know that people who listen to the podcast for the first couple episodes know that Bryce and I um, have known each other for about a good seven years now, but um, I had the fortunate opportunity to meet Bryce and Amy at the same time, so it wasn't just one or, or the other. So I, I've known them together for, the, um, I know for myself, as long as I've known them, they've been married. And yeah, you've kind of had a front row seat to yeah. all things Bryce and Amy. Yeah, and <laughs> and it's and, well. and, and, and crazy <laughs> enough, it's kind of been able to see a different side of them and see a different way that their relationship work and it's and it, I can say that you guys' relationship has definitely given me a, a different perspective but a good insight as far as to how things look going forward for myself but for a good relationship for me I, I don't know I think I, I do believe in a relationship and like you said that that pinnacle um I do believe in the family and, you know, being the husband and having that, you know, be a part of my life. But I, I just think that the um, approach of it is such a different concept for me nowadays, just because I, I, I also have that subconscious um, view of a relationship that I've had over my life. Yeah, I, uh, I see that, you know, it's, I have to kind of flip the script a little bit because not only have you had a front row seat to what Amy and I have gone through the time that you've been close with us, we've been able to watch you and the different things that go through your experience and your dating. And I know Amy and I have had many times where we've, we've just, it, watching your experience has been a spark to incredible conversations that we've had specific to our own relationship and how we look at ourselves and each other and you know, one, one of the things um, that was, I think would be good for us to discuss, all three of us here, is, is some of the different uh, playbooks, I guess, that exist to kind of get to that pinnacle. Um, <clears throat> you know, one of my favorite movies when I was younger, it's I'm showing how old I am. There's a movie called When Harry Met Sally. It's, it's old, but it's a good one. And <clears throat> the premise of the movie is basically this guy and this girl have this fundamental difference in the argument that it's... The guy says it's impossible to be friends with somebody. If you're heterosexual, it's, it's impossible to be friends with somebody of the opposite sex. And the woman says, no, you can. And the guy says, well, you may be able to, but the dude's always going to try to bone you. So deal with that. So translating that into uh, a committed relationship, it uses an interesting dynamic. So I, I wanted me, to get... why are you rolling your eyes? <laughs> Well, well, Amy, in, in your in your opinion, I mean, we were talking about this the other day about, you know, we, we even brought it up. We have we have a couple friend that we went, a, a newer couple friends that have uh, just kind of happened recently that we, we asked them when we were out to dinner with them on Saturday night. You know, what, what is your take on this? And and uh, tell us what that conversation went like when we were discussing that with. Well, first of all, as a woman, I mean, we are naturally territorial. We mm -hmm. don't like sharing things very much. And we don't like feeling like we have to compete for your attention. And so when there are other females involved, I mean, that's when the claws come out. We, you know, naturally just don't feel like that's something that is acceptable. And I think that on, on the flip side, I don't know of any men who would be okay if, you know, your girlfriend had a bunch of single guy friends. You know, like it's just, it puts you in a position where you feel like you're having to one up the friends if you will you know and that's it, it just causes problems I don't ever think that that's something that is healthy for a relationship now if you have like you know again couple friends that's a totally different thing but if you have single girlfriends Colby you know <laughs> and you're trying to seriously find a, a mate in life that's something that's going to have to take a back seat and I really think that you're going to struggle oh, with that until oh, you do. Okay, so uh, obviously the point that they're indicating is because I have we've had this conversation <laughs> multiple times because I have girls who are friends. Um, quite naturally for me, I've grown up around a lot of women, and I've I, just, I know with um, Bryce Bryce one point he made is that you know most men grow up with women, but and my argument for that is I think I've grown up with a lot more women than most men typically grow up with. I have two older sisters. I was raised by my mother and my grandmother, my closest cousin who is like a sister to me is obviously a girl and just naturally I know within myself I have 
I, I mean, I've always had a, I guess you could say a series of girls who were just friends. Now, like when Harry met Sally, <laughs> the whole point of, you know, guys just want to fuck a girl and, you know, I guess you want to put in that route. I, I get it. I totally do. The thing with me and the reason why it is I'm. So just, just before you continue. So you're, you're making a case that it's okay to be in a committed relationship but have your your friends that have the same the opposite sex yes. outside and, of that I, I that are close friends. I, I personally think that there are boundaries that need to be set. There are yeah, things like that don't need to hang out set. with your single girlfriends. <laughs> yeah, but that's the thing. It's like I'm not hanging out with them as far as you know. Do you ever confide in your relationship when when you were in a relationship? Did you ever talk about your relationship with single girlfriends? No. Never ever. Never talked about. Did you ever my talk about their relationship? Did they ever talk about their relationship with you? Um, just brought up how that person's doing, how like what they've been, you know, what they've been up to. Because the girls who I've who I've been friends with, most of them have been in a relationship or have currently been. I mean, most of them have a very minimal time span of being single. So I'm not. I, I they've all had guys who they're friends with, but I, I don't talk about my relationship as much as talking, you know, to them about specific things, whether that's. You know, the friendship with school, different scenarios with family that's going on, stuff like that. And then on top of that, it's not like I'm sitting in my bedroom having a conversation with them and that, you know, alone. And that's where it's happening. It's a coffee shop or it's, you know, a group of friends. And we have that kind of um, scenario um, to where that happens. I mean, it's and even in the, the point when I was in a relationship and, you know, I was still going out to coffee or something with a friend. Yeah. The girlfriend knew about it. Like I made sure. It doesn't she knew mean about she was it. okay with it. Would you be okay with her going out with a guy? See, but that's the thing. Is no, 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 no. No, exactly. If you want that answer, yes, I would be okay with it. Why? It's because I am not afraid of another guy coming in and what stealing my girlfriend. That's where I guess I differ from the way girls differ. Is that girls, like you said, are territorial. Me, I just I'm I'm confident enough in myself to know that I can I'm okay with the person who I'm dating going and having coffee with some guy if they've been friends with them before. It's not it's I. That's not a problem to me because I'm confident in who I am. And if she says that she's with me, then okay, I understand that she's with me. Why should I worry about her going and being swept off her feet by another guy? You know, I can speak from experience because accidents happen. Friends turn into something more sometimes. And it's not like you're planning for it to happen. But instead of putting yourself into that position that could potentially ruin your relationship. If you are looking at your relationship as like the end all be all, like I'm going to be with this person. At that point, you have to really assess what is important to you. And if your girlfriend says, Hey, look, I'm not okay with this anymore. I would prefer that we either hang out together, but not individually. Like, you know, I, I, obviously I, I, the essence of this this discussion, I side with Amy on this because I've seen, you know, from personal experience, I can see how it sometimes can be a slippery slope when you start to get to know somebody and then feelings get involved and then you've got this other thing happening on the other side and you're trying to reconcile and it's not pretty. At the same time, though, like I get that, you know, two dates in and all of a sudden you're supposed to disavow all your friends. Like that's not cool either. Like there's got to be a balance as far as an understanding of what the relationship really is. And, you know, Colby talking with you the many times that we have, that seems to be something that is, um, it's, it's a moving target in the dating world period, regardless of who it is, especially at the beginning where, you know, you haven't had that DTR, as they say, the define the relationship talk and there, but yet, you know, people are getting physical so quickly nowadays compared to when I was younger to where like all of a sudden sex is involved where it wasn't, you know, as much anyway, 15, 20 years ago. And, and that produces an emotion and a feeling and a bond that is sometimes unexplainable. And it's just, I guess the whole point I'm getting at is that I am so glad I'm not single right now because it seems like it's a battlefield out there and it sucks. I mean, I, I, uh, sheepishly, I'll admit I didn't find the quote or not the quote, but the article to back up what I'm going to say, but I know it's out there and I'll post it on the blog when we, um, when this is up. But I I read an article recently, it might have been on BuzzFeed, but it was talking about how (laughs) in major metropolitan areas, Tinder was causing prostitution to take a hit. The profitability of prostitution was taking a hit because and, of Tinder. And see, and and I, I'm not a big fan of Tinder. I, I tried it once. I grinder is out your yeah. <laughs> wow. Plenty of fish. Uh, yeah. So um, the thing with Tinder, I'm not a big fan of is it, it's kind of shallow. 
I really think it's well, kind you of... You think? And, I mean, it, it's funny. I remember back in the movie The Social Network, um, Mark Zuckerberg did the hot or not. And, you know, and that kind of got a little bit of outrage. Yeah. But yet, it's back, ladies and gentlemen, and it's called Tinder. And it's pretty much, oh, if you're hot enough for me, um, we can connect and we can talk and then... See, and that's another thing. I think that people who are on Tinder and Plenty of Fish and things like that, aren't really looking for committed relationships. They're yeah. just looking for sex. Pretty much. I mean, if you are really, I, I get, I mean, again, I, I agree with you, Bryce. Like, I praise the Lord that I don't have to worry about dating these days because where do you find a quality individual? You know, like yeah, the only tough. the only thing I can think of is joining Match.com or something like that where you can weed through, you know, the crap. But aside from that, I mean... But Going even then, like websites, that still isn't a guarantee. I mean, it's it's not a guarantee, yeah. but I think that the chances are a lot higher. I mean, I know of three people offhand who are in very healthy, successful relationships via Match.com. Yeah, you know, not yeah. saying that that's and, the only way to do it, but and my I mean, sister's in a pretty yeah. serious relationship from Match.com. Yeah, as well. I mean, I know that that's proven to work, but I mean, if you're on Tinder trying to find love, like. You are missing but, the point. But like and, and not... I don't even think it's being on Tinder and just trying to find love. I think being on Tinder itself just kind of shows the shallowness and just your lack of really caring about knowing somebody. Yeah. Whereas, like, I mean, as cliche as this may sound, I mean, I, I genuinely want to get to understand somebody. Whether that turns into, you know, a relationship or not, I want to know what's ticking in the head of yours so that way yeah. I could be able to understand you know more about you and potentially want to go on a second date and right. go on further into things you know it's funny you bring that up because um, our uh, our close friend doug uh mm-hmm. he he uh has <laughs> shared some horror stories actually about tinder and some of the things on there but he had an interesting point when we were discussing it with him one time he said salt lake is a little different because because of the here in salt lake city the prominent religion is the is mormonism the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints has a huge i mean their headquarters are here a lot of people here are mormon and that comes with a certain um uh, how do you say it set of rules i guess and so with tinder there's like these these like factions of within there where you know it's not necessarily about hooking up it can be used legitimately for a dating site and i know that there's other parts of the country where that can be the case too but it still is one of those things where It just feels a little off. Like, I don't care if I put up like this wholesome Tinder profile and, you know, I'm holding my puppy or I've got my kid in the background or whatever. It still is the same to me as going to a bar and not drinking, but still being willing to entertain the girls at the bar. And and I've talked to multiple friends of mine who have been on Tinder who have said that a girl putting LDS on her, (laughs) on her profile doesn't mean shit. Like, (laughs) like still gotten the D like Mm -hmm. it's like, it's still like, and it's sad. It's sad to see, but I just, just don't light up a cigarette when you're done. That's when the problems (laughs) happen. Or drink coffee. Yeah. Or or all the above. It's, it's just, so well, that, that, that leads into kind of an interesting point because, you know, right right now in this whole, I'll just say United States culture, religion and spirituality and, uh, you know, that whole genre, that whole direction, whatever, it's it plays kind of an interesting role in all of this. I it, In my own experience, you know, I, I grew up um, LDS. And uh, that was a that was a big part of my life for a long time, and so that came with a lot of the kind of the conditioning of what that meant specific to relationships. I, I, you know, wasn't promiscuous. I wasn't I wasn't that guy. You know, I, I just it just wasn't. And so, I strictly and specifically know that that the religion side of it played a huge part in the decisions that I made specific to certain things. And, and fortunately, that came with in the. I mean, there's some shit I've had to deal with in my own mind outside of the whole dating thing specific to the religion, but inside of it, like there's certain things I didn't have to deal with that some people did, you know, my girlfriend didn't get pregnant when I was in high school. I didn't have issues with, you know, STDs or any of that or any of that. Yeah. Stuff. But having said all that, you did get married a little premature for. Uh, yeah. And, and I'm glad you brought that up. Cause I believe you did too. I did. And you know, I think that we kind of learned from our mistakes, I didn't. but. <laughs> <Damn it. laughs> We, we, we did, you know, and that, that's an, an interesting point because we've got the, the, you know, the point counterpoint here, you know, Colby's, you know, you're in your mid twenties. Um, and I know from, I mean, I love you like a brother and I want the, the best for you and everything that you do. And so when I look at, you know, some of the different relationship woes that I've seen you have and the successes even that you've had for, you know, shorter periods of time and different things, I'm just like, ah, oh, I hope, 
I hope that it works, you know, that, that Colby's able well, to figure it out and able to get there because it's, it's incredible when it's and, done right. I mean, I have seen friends and, you know, even just acquaintances who have used, you know, religion or something of, of that caliber as a reason to get married. And um, it, it's unfortunate because you do see that they barely know that the person that they're getting with or even more important. Well, yeah, they don't know themselves even. Exactly. I mean, that's the thing. I, I feel like people who get married in their 20s are still so immature in life that they don't even really know who they are. So when you marry that young, you're, you know, I mean, not that everybody who marries young is destined to fail, but I think statistically they grow apart because they're not the same people that they were. You know, you you mature and you realize, oh, I want more out of life. And sometimes you don't grow together, so well, you grow apart. Well, and I, it's for, for just to use an example, I just talked to my old boss about a week ago. And his son is six months back from his mission. And he's already getting married. And I'm just like, I, I'm pretty appalled because I was like, how long has he known his new girlfriend for? And he's like, oh, he just barely met her the day that he got back. And I'm just like, I'm like, wow. I'm like already. And I just think back because he's 21 years old. And I think about how I was when I was 21 years old. And if I got married at that point in time, I don't know if I would well, be in your, a relationship. Those are children at that yeah, point. Yeah, and it's like a kid. You, you have yet, yet to experience anything let, about life, let alone yourself. Well, they think that they're ready because they just served two years by themselves. But living with a roommate is not the same as living with a significant other. Mm-hmm. I mean, exactly. it's hard. I mean, it's still hard. We've been married 10 years and there's still things he does. It drives me crazy. But, you know, we talk about it. Yeah. and. You know, we're still learning each other, but we're growing together, you know? And and I think that's one of the bigger things, too, is that um, from religion, because, I mean, going to church every Sunday and you seeing all these couples who, you know, been together and their kids and everything, and even with schools, they don't really tell you about, like, the things that you had, the underlying, you know, the underlying, you know, things that you have to factor in for a relationship, which I mean, seeing, being known you guys for a long time. I mean, I've, I, I've seen some things that, you know, most, they don't like, they don't tell you in like a, a book or they don't tell you at Sunday school that tells you like, that you really need to understand about the person or to understand about, um, communicating. That is a big thing. And I think that's an impactful thing that, people should know about prior leading into a a marriage, let alone a relationship. But yet that's something that I just don't feel like is talked about or communicated upon because you're not, if you can't understand yourself, if you don't understand your, your entire being, I can't imagine you being able to know, let allow your partner to have the honor of knowing yourself. Because at that point it's kind of like, you know, it's an uphill climb trying to um, learn yourself while Fighting another uphill climb, you know, you know, trying to be able to build a relationship. I'm, I'm curious, Amy, if you remember this little phase I went through after you and I got married. Um, we, we had a pretty interesting first couple years, to say the least. And during that time, um, I had a lot of kind of a lot of growing up that I did. I'll say, understanding both myself and just humanity and different things in relationships. And I remember. Um, I actually went to therapy for a little bit just because my head was in a spin. It was just not, I was not a good place. Well, we even did couples therapy, you know? I mean, I think that when we first got together before we got married, we agreed that we were going to figure out what our issues were in our previous relationship and not bring them into our relationship. Because if you're living in the past, there's no way you're going to, you know. And I think that's a huge thing too. You know, I know that's something that, you know, obviously when I get into a relationship and reach that point, that's something that I would definitely consider because um, unfortunately with people, you have to be able to have a a third party or somebody who you can, who you don't necessarily. Yeah, not single girlfriends. Don't go to them. (laughs) Relationship advice. Yeah, obviously. Well, the, where, the what I was gonna where I was going with that was the guy that was the my therapist talked about the the most healthy relationships the most healthy marriages are marriages between two people that don't need the other and coming from the background that I had had and the perspective I had had from even seeing my own parents and other relationships and then the religion and then my first marriage that blew my mind. I didn't understand why anybody would want to be married if they weren't going to get something out of it. That was my mindset at that time. I kept thinking like, well, if I don't need her, if she's not going to be there to like help me feel better or X, Y, Z, whatever, fill in the blank, 
what's the point? And I had, I remember, I don't know if you remember when I kind of went through that. I mean, I'm like, what is the whole point? Of, of course mar- I do. We had tons of issues during that point. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was, you wanted me to fill your cup. Yeah. And, and I, I didn't, I didn't understand that. So, you know, kind of go, come full circle with this whole thing. Relationships period. If there's one thing that is, it, it, it's missing. Well, it's not missing in every relationship, obviously, because there's relationships that are succeeding. I feel, you know, that it's we're, we're coming along as a society, but accountability, true accountability for understanding that, you know, in my relationship with Amy, for example, I know that at the moment that I require something of her, I need her, so I quote unquote, need her support. I need her acceptance. I need her love. I need her whatever it is. That puts her in a position to resent that I need that. And it would it changes the behavior that comes. And it's not conscious. It's something that happens. It's like when you're expected to do something, all of a sudden your feelings about what it is changes. But the moment that I express that I appreciate certain things, but yet I don't require them, and that I legitimately remove expectation from it happening, is actually, I know for me, I, I can't speak for you, Aim, but... In our relationship, that's been when I've been the happiest with us. When it's like, you know how I like certain things. You know when I want certain things. You know kind of how the whole thing works. And if I say, okay, here it is. But I don't collect, if you will, when it doesn't happen. Like, you're the best spouse ever. And that's because I'm not bugging you. I'm not requiring anything. But I'm still mindful. It's like the same thing. Like, you and I were talking the other day about the shower. Like, Mm -hmm pet peeve little little stupid pet peeves that the other people have it's like she was well, telling it's not me, even pet peeves in my opinion it's about making that other person's day that much easier you know like i go into my day not really doing things just for myself but for our family you right. know so it's like what can i do today that was is going to make his day easier and so i think that that's more you know how i see it i don't see it as oh i have these little annoyance things it's more like you know is it gonna kill you to take two minutes and pick your shoes up so that i don't have to do it with the 100 other things on my list you know just little things where you're it shows your spouse that you are being considerate and that you are thinking about their needs as well or their wants if you will right real quick though colby the, the to draw the line in the sand though like i know there's certain things that, I mean, we've communicated. I know there's certain things that I can do for you that make your day easier. And right. there's certain considerations that I can do, not having been asked, that go a mile. At the same time, though, it doesn't ruin your day if I don't do them. It just has a different effect on the relationship. But your personal happiness is a choice that you make. My personal happiness is a choice that I make. And so being accountable on both sides of the relationship that Amy has, a, has a, the power to affect me if I let her, but ultimately it's my choice to let her and kind of going full circle with the the therapy experience that I had, that was the hardest thing for me to figure out by far. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Cole. No, you... I'm, I mean, uh, and I, I think that's just the hardest thing is accountability. I think that's one of the things that we are not taught and most people have a hard time embracing is accountability. And with that being one of the focal points of anything, especially on your own personal being, um, if you can't understand that and you go into a relationship and that person fucks up, it's you're not taking accountability for like why what what happened to that scenario. I mean, that's the thing is that you can only control what you can control. And there's nothing. I mean, and I, I'm a big believer, and I, I'm I, I just I, it's something I believe within everything in me. It is impossible, impossible in this universe that we occupy for anybody to make me happy. It is impossible. They can help, you know. There's little things that people can do that, like, assist in your happiness, but it's ultimately up to you. Yeah, to, yeah exactly. It can make that. your choice yeah. easier, but yeah. it's your choice. It can make my choice easier, but, again, it's my choice. Right. I have to choose to be happy. I have to want within myself to be happy. You can't do that for me. I have to be able to go to terms. I mean, even even if you do something great for me, it doesn't mean that I'm going to be happy from it. It's a choice, and it's all up to me. And I don't think people, uh, people get that. They think that... I can go into this relationship and it can make me happy. They're going to make me yeah, happy. Yeah, or they're going to make me happy yeah. and they're going to provide me everything I'm looking for. She's my soulmate. She's my other half. Like there's there's some destructive 
labels in the whole fairy tale of love that get thrown around that really paint a picture well, that is going to doomed and, and, to fail. And unfortunately, it's all these movies and everything that we <laughs> we watch and see on a consistent basis that says, oh, like you have to have this person in your life to be happy, which don't get me wrong, I, I'm a sap for the next chick flick, but... Well, a lot of it too is how moment, you're, ladies. A lot of it too is how you're raised. I mean, if you are raised in a family where your parents don't love each other but they're together out of convenience, which happens way too much. Yeah. I mean, you're you're teaching your children how to go into a relationship. You know, you don't need to love each other; yeah. just deal with and, it. And it's funny because I I actually have um, know another couple that um, I I've actually heard out from one of the partners' mouths that their child doesn't believe in marriage or relationships and the child is maybe like around nine or ten and the Not child doesn't early. yeah the child doesn't believe in marriage and the partner knows the reason why the child doesn't believe in marriage is because the husband and the wife are together and are absolutely miserable together yeah so and i mean wow. we're, we're big believers of energy is everything so i mean if you if your kid knows that and the child knows that they don't believe in marriage like i'm talking goes to school and tells the teacher i'm not getting married i'll have kids but i won't get married and you know the reason is because of the parents and the vibration and the energy that they're letting off to their kids. I mean, that just is a testament yeah. to um, why it is that well, needs to Well, we train people how to treat us. And it's, you know, out of respect to uh, a close friend of mine that I have, I, I've, I've watched as, as their relationship has been that relationship of convenience and, and the, the demonstration to their children about how that is a, is a blueprint that those kids will have to deal with when they get into relationships in the future about how mom and dad treat each other yeah. and what sort of passion and relationship and love there is there. And it's, it's, really, it's, it's truly sad because all of the individuals involved in that scenario are good people yeah. and it doesn't have to be that way. Well, I mean... Looking at statistics, I know that everybody thinks that this marriage is this, you know, 50%, you know, marriages fail, which in actuality, I just did some research and um, it said that um, actually the percentages of marriage that fail is actually in more in between the 20 to 25%. That's first uh, marriage, range. right? Yeah, first marriages. Okay. Now, I mean, this you guys are on your second marriage and Woo-hoo. once you get into you guys' second marriage... Second and last, let's just Yeah, second and last, good job, high five. <laughs> um, but when you, I mean, for most people, I mean, for when you get out of that first marriage and you go into your second marriage, your percentages of failure jump to 60%. And if you get out of that marriage and you file for divorce and then you want to get into a third marriage, your percentage of divorce go up to 73 percent so well i think that you know and this is just my own personal opinion but i feel like a lot of people who get married for the second time already go into it tainted thinking wonder how this one's going to end exactly you know what i mean if you're going into a relationship already expecting it to end how do you expect it to succeed and that's what me and bryce were talking about is that most of these people go into it because um I mean, I know Bryce said it perfectly. These people already have experienced it, divorce once, yeah. and they're like, "Wow, it's not as bad as it as I thought it was." Oh, he doesn't make me happy, or she doesn't make me happy. <sighs> Bitch, you done. Yeah, people don't care like, to work at it. They would rather yeah, just walk away. Exactly, and um, I, I mean, just based off of those statistics, and I mean, it. I know for myself, I know a couple of people who are on their second or third marriages, and uh, I mean. Would you say the concept of marriage is a dying trend? Because I also know some people who are um, are living together that have been together for years and aren't even married yet. It's becoming extinct, I think. I mean, like I said, I mean, how many how many people can you name off the top of your head that are in a happy marriage? Like maybe on one hand. I mean, yeah, yeah. it's hard, you know. It is. Marriage is hard, but I mean, you have to, it takes two people to make it work just like it takes two people to fail. And if both parties aren't willing to work at it. Well, I'm just to add, to add to that, that perspective though, there are good marriages out there and there are people that are happy, but the overall tone in our culture and society is that marriage, eh. it's, it's this institution that is outdated and it doesn't work and you've got to give, it's all this, I've got to give, 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 and you don't get anything in return. And, and you, it's so, I get so frustrated seeing on television. It started to die down a little bit, but the commercials with the idiot dude and then the wife that's nagging, like that's the picture that is seen on television about marriage. The guy that's a dummy and that has to be reminded of something by the wife. And then the wife is the nagging. And, And frankly, I mean, just to justify that point, 
I hate to say it, coming from a single guy standpoint and just over the past like year of, you know, friends and stuff that I've seen or heard, guys can be fucking remedial. Like, I don't know. Well, so can I, girls, dude. That's the... Oh, uh, go, yeah. Girls girls are just over-emotional. Guys just... We can't control it, dude. Sorry. I, I know. Hormones. I, I, well, I mean, with it. Mother Nature. Mother <laughs> yeah. Nature. Um, but it's like, so yeah, women have that side of it. I mean, and but at least your over-emotionalness is... It, it's, planned. it's temporary it, yeah it's 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 planned out every and you month. know when it's coming yeah, like there's signs when it's coming. like bryce men's knows stupidity. and you know out of two weeks men, out of every month men, just be careful two weeks. Men, men's stupidity all <laughs> yeah, i think you know of, the week before and the week yeah. of and well it's so funny good. all i think about what i what i think of men is like i remember chris rock on i think he's bigger blacker in one of those um stand-ups he was wearing his purple suit and it was um fellas you know when when girls get pregnant he's like the one thing that you don't say is so what you gonna do? <laughs> and that just seriously, like in my head, just uh, it's the epitome of how dumb men can be when it comes. Well, down hold, to hold it. on though, like that—that's something that I—I don't—I'm not willing to go there because that to me is half the problem. This idea that men are the problem, that men are dumb, and that men this and men that. Like, like I said, there's, there's, there's plenty of good. Yeah, it's it's like the squeaky wheel thing like you know you and i have friends that we could point and be like really she allowed that dude to do that and now he's like come on <laughs> and the guy deserves the criticism for being a deadbeat granted but there's a lot of guys out there that don't deserve it that are actually good dudes yeah. that do this and and the overall tone is that because the idiots get more attention it overshadows this idea that all guys are like that and that's not the case i i know and 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 I can't say this for a fact because it's not this time, but you'd be a good guy, you know, in a relationship with a, as a dad and everything. I would hope I know, anyway right? that, that you would be able to be responsible that way. And that's the way I, I look at, that's the way I, I, I see it. Like, I don't have this expectation for you to be an idiot. I have this expect, expectation for you to be successful. And it, it drives me crazy because there's this spiral effect. You know, you, you pose the question, you know, um, I can't remember exactly what your question was about marriage, but it's it's oh, it's a dying a dying trend. You say is is marriage a dying trend? And it is, but it doesn't have to be, because it actually is. I mean, if you look at history, if if you if you have a certain type of perspective and you're willing to look at this, every major empire in the history of our world was toppled at some point because family and the hierarchy of the family and the roles of family broke down in some way. And so there's a need in society for there to be dads that are dads to their children and mothers that are mothers to their children. And even if they're not together, they've got to have a relationship that works, that can send a message to those kids of strength and foundation and confidence. If men are looked at as these idiots throughout our, our culture on TV and everything, and then we highlight the, the, the guys that are hit it and quit it and run and knocking girls up, then that's going to be what everybody thinks is acceptable. Yeah. Because if you think it's acceptable, all of a sudden it becomes a potential behavior. Well, and I think it's just because it's not addressed. Um, I, I know for myself, um, I, I have seen a lot of the men who get into you know relationships more for the pleasure that comes from, and not from the actual um, you know actual the goal of being in the relationship. And you know, well, def- define on. that further because that's a pretty so, okay. Men, some men just want to be able to have sex with women and be able to, you know, have that be the pleasure that they only enjoy, or just get into it because it was that good and they got caught up in it, and have that be the case rather than actually enjoying the relationship. And you know, and women. Yeah, but women, if that's the case, I mean, at least have the dignity to wrap it up because what you're doing is these men. You know, yeah. I mean, if you're not using protection, you're putting yourself in a position where you could be, you know, having a, a, you know, a baby together and, you know, then what, you know, you're raising that kid and and, and just, or you're leaving it to a woman and and then you've got a a kid that doesn't have a family, a father figure in the home that ends up doing shit down the road. And and like, and like Bryce said, I think it goes to women too, because I mean, you're, it's your job for, to be able to make a man use protection, but some women even use that, you know, sex as the reason to be able to lock a man down and to give him reason to stay around, which is really sad and pathetic, just as much as the guy being able to allow that be the case. And you think I'm joking, but I know you're not joking. That's why I'm laughing. Just the phrase of like, Locking a man down, it legitimately is locking him down. If that's not what, if the if 
yeah monogamy and intimacy isn't the intended goal and they're just trying to hit exactly. it exactly i think you just need to know what you're in it for yeah. you know if you're in it just to have sex just be man enough to say look like i am just dtf i don't want to do anything else <laughs> yeah. and if you're not willing to do it then like move on because we have way too many kids that don't have um you know parents that are living together or are married and i think that that's why marriage is failing or why yeah. you know it's well, an issue. Well, There's- I, I could say for myself, I mean, I'm, I'm a millennial and I mean, it's, it's very well, like, I guess you could say documented or shared that, you know, our generation doesn't marry or doesn't want to get married as much as, you know, other generations do. Because they're still in mom's basement. For the most part. Yes. <laughs> um, I, I just say for myself, the reason why it is, I don't, I'm not married yet or haven't been in a long-term relationship yet is it goes back to the concept of not understanding myself. Um, I have wanted to spend the last few years really trying to understand, you know, as much as myself as I, as I can. Now, uh, for the record, I do think that dating is an important way to be able to understand yourself when it comes down to the relationship standpoint. And I, I encourage people to date people to kind of get them an idea of themselves when it comes to, you know, being in a relationship. But I, I'm not the type to jump into one. I mean, even my mom and I had a conversation a couple of weeks ago and she just said, she's like, I want you to be in a relationship, but I'm not surprised because ever since you were a kid, you've always been very independent. You've always been to yourself and you've always kind of thrived by being by yourself. And I, I know I could, I know I could spend the entire, my entire lifetime, you know, by myself and frankly, well, anybody happy. could, but yeah. it's just, that's a sad existence. Exactly. It is know? a sad existence, but I also, I'm not going to be the guy who just jumps into a relationship with a girl just because she's hot or maybe she's got a good career going for her. I want somebody who you can gradually build with yeah. and that's the process behind it but i'm not just going to settle for oh t- uh, i like her you know let me pick her she's okay she's she's good enough she she qualifies Let, let's just let's fit into that category let's get married you know it's not that easy to me yeah. i want to be able to build with somebody and that's I, I think a lot of guys are not open and willing to say something of that caliber since i mean frankly it, i mean it's really the way that you would hope you would want a relationship to go one of the things that occurred to me, uh, this is just a couple short years ago, and Amy and I have talked about this several times, the amount of, amount of work and both self-discovery and committedness that it takes to a relationship to get to a point where you, you're happy and you're healthy and you're passionate and it's all good, the idea of a soulmate kind of goes away. It's like, you know, there's on this planet with how there's so many options really, that good people can be successful in a relationship together if they want to be. It's this whole, you know, it's, it's sparked by movies and everything, but this whole idea of like, there's the one person out there, it's just utter bullshit. It's not true. Like if you have, and, and this is where, you know, being the, the statesman, I'll say, and looking at kind of the single world nowadays and even some of the experiences that you've had, Colby, I look and I go, it's not, I remember being that guy where it had to be perfect like that. But at the same time, knowing now in the, in the end that, you know, I, I love my wife more than I've loved anything or anybody else in my entire life, including my children. She's the, the top of the heap when it comes to my pa- the passion I feel, the love I feel, the commitment. It's because your kids won't cook you dinner. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of things the kids can't do. That... <laughs> the point I'm getting at, though, is that I recognize in that, though, that it's gotten to the point that it has with, with Amy because we worked at it and we had a, I mean, to consider that we're still married and we're as happy as we are considering our beginning. We've been in the trenches a lot. I mean, oh you name gosh. it like exes, health, money, in-laws, any issue or problem that could be thrown in and a even relationship. Just the, and not going into the details, but even just the unconventional nature of our beginning. Yeah. It was not smooth or easy. Something about you for me just, made me willing to, to do what it took to be with you. Well, and for me, I think that it, you know, what got us through the hard times is that we were friends first. Like even yeah. when we couldn't like love each other in that moment, like we had qualities that were worth staying together for, you know? I mean, it didn't make it easy, but at least we could be friends at the well, end of the day. So, I mean, with you two having that said, I mean, I know you the nature of your guys' situation. 
But and since you guys have gone through the trenches, you guys have gone through many battles and have lasted through you know through a lot of it. I I know I've seen it firsthand. Um, what would you guys say are some misconceptions that you know society or you know religion or anybody paints about relationships that or marriage that obviously you feel like. Um, I wish I would have known that ahead of time. Well, the first thing is that it should be easy. I mean, nothing worth having comes easy. You, It's a constant struggle, if you will. And not even a struggle, but you, you have to be open to change. You know, like your marriage or your relationship is not going to stay the same. It's going to change and it's going to evolve. And you're either going to do it together or you're not. You know, and that's that's something that you have to kind of go into it knowing that, you know, yeah, Can for, I see myself with this person no matter what, you know? Well, for, for me, it's breaking it down a little bit further than what, with what Amy said. There's been, I've, I've fallen in love with four different people the time that I've been married to Amy and they've all been her. Like she's changed and I've changed throughout that time to where we've been given an opportunity to be in a new relationship sort of with new versions of ourselves as we've grown and matured. Yeah. And being willing to look at it that way and to know that that was one of the simple truths that was, it was a, it was a no matter what type truth that I understood about her, that she was always going to give me a shot. If I changed and she changed, we were always going to give each other a shot. And that's what happens every day. We're well, gonna... and it boils down to communication too. Whatever our struggles were, it was like, okay, how are we going to get through this? Not how are you going to fix this? Yeah. You know, and I think that's another thing that people don't take into consideration. Just because you're the man and the, you know, the provider, I don't expect you to fix everything. We do it together. You know, we, we sit down and we say, okay, what are we going to do? It's not, okay, fix this, you know? Yeah. And I think that's a good point to highlight on because I know from the people who I've seen who've been in relationships, it's like, you know, the woman relies on the guy to be, you know, the provider or relies on him to be that. And then the woman to be the, you know, the nurture, you know, the nurture, caretaker caretaker and be that. And it's like, and it's important to, you know, distinguish your roles. roles. Yeah, Yeah, for sure. But the unity of a relationship is only going to withstand struggle if you yeah. do it together well that's the thing is i also recognize how a woman can be your provider yeah and absolutely how, and, and how, i was yeah. for a while you yeah. know we both worked for yeah. many years it wasn't until we decided to have isabel that we both decided that exactly. i was gonna stay home and you know raise the yeah. kids yeah. so and I, I i will add to that though kind of going back into the discussion of millennials and the idea of marriage there there are roles within a marriage the masculine energy and the feminine energy that must be honored for a successful relationship to really work. You know, Amy went back to work a couple years ago when some things were pretty rough, when I was still trying to build my business and we had some things. And I I know for me personally that that was a struggle because I felt like that was my job. It was my job to be the one that's providing. And even though I was doing, I was going through the motions of building a business and doing what I needed to that way, I wasn't succeeding sufficiently enough to where it was allowing her to stay home. And it affected my feelings that I had about myself as a man, as a provider, all this. On the flip side, and I can't speak for her, obviously, but I recognized as well that there was a, there was resentment that came the other way from her understanding her role and her responsibility as a caretaker and a mother that even though she never openly said it, I could feel it, that it was like, Bryce, this is your job. You know, we, we've got to readjust some things here. And it wasn't until those roles by choice were able to be realigned and she came home again, that our relationship really started to flourish again. Well, and to add to that, know your circle. You know what I mean? Like when I was working, I was also surrounded by women who were scorned or single or freshly out of divorce or whatever. And they had nothing positive to say about men. And so when I was in that eight hours a day, of course, like that was in the forefront of my mind every single day and it made it hard you know that's when we had some issues for sure yeah. and your friends you know if your friends are single or they have had bad relationships you know just be aware of what you know who you're talking about your relationship with because people can pull you down and make it worse if you're if you'll let them you know yeah so that's a great that's a great little tidbit of advice for people that are stumbling through the you know single scene that Guard your circle because 
venting could not be venting it could be well, death. And, and that's the thing too is that i know the whole with you know the girls who are friends i i recognize more than anything that you know you i'm not going to allow a, what a friend you know especially of some of some fits of the opposite sex to dictate you know how that goes yeah. um and how my relationship is dictated um obviously i will i mean i will appreciate a feminine uh, perspective the one that i can't obviously have myself because again it's a well man, and you man, shouldn't man. confide your relationship in other no. people either that's the biggest mistake yeah, that people make they, they are open with way too many people about personal things and yeah. That is never going to end well. And of course, and I, and I also know too that there are three sides to every story. There's yeah. your side, the other side, and the truth. And frankly, that person is only getting one perspective and they're going to stick up for your perspective because yep. you're the friend. So I, I totally understand that as well. My, my former business partner was a saint when it came to that, the way that he would talk about his, his spouse. Um, they're not together anymore, ironically, but when they were together, they... He would have visible frustrations, and you you, you don't have to be a, a surgeon to know that no oh, problems going at home, you know. And he told me he's like, I'm not going to tell you what's going on because I don't want you to have that story of her in your head. Yeah. So he wasn't putting it on me to interpret his story, which inevitably happens. I mean, it's like we all have experiences. Uh, I, I I get a kick out of it because, um, you know, some of the the. <laughs> relationships that have come and gone from old friends I'm from everybody here and um when when you talk about some when I express frustration about my spouse to somebody friend or not that's the new story that's out there and that person now has that bias when they have in, encounters with your spouse or your person the person you're discussing and if you want to have a successful marriage nip it don't don't do that if you're going to talk to somebody about your relationship, talk to the person you're in the relationship with. Yeah. It's pretty yeah. simple. Or a therapist, I guess, if it comes yeah. down to it. So, I mean, what would, I, I know for myself that I, I do see marriage as an opportunity, you know, in the future. But I, I admit <laughs> I'm indifferent as far as needing marriage. Because I do see that... But at least you recognize that about yeah, yourself. You yeah, know, you're exactly. not out there, you know, trying to fill this void with something that's you know that you're not really looking for exactly and I, I think I am I'm a very monogamous person I know that I can be with one person and have that be you know the only relationship that I'm a part of just because I, I know that about myself I've recognized that about myself but I also recognize that if I was in a relationship with you know with a girl for you know extended period of time Marriage to me is, uh, I heard it off of Oprah's next chapter when she was talking to Pharrell. And um, Pharrell had been with his partner for, I think it was like seven, eight, maybe nine years. And Oprah said to him, it was like, marriage was the period at the end of the sentence. And it, it was just it. That was, that yeah. was it. And that's kind of what I've, how I, it, it instantly connected with me. And I've remembered it to this day because it seriously connected with me because I feel like, from my perspective, um, girls want to get married because it fills the um, it fills the perspective or the perception that other people have of what the what that relationship is, and that I, I get well, it. Well, it's not only that; it's about connection. You know, like women inherently don't want to be alone. Yeah. You know, and I don't think many do either. But I don't think that it's just about you know, oh, look what I got. It's more just about they don't want to be alone. You know, we well, want that's, connection. But, we, but that's they're, and they're willing to go be one of twenty five on yeah. a TV show to the point that they don't want yeah. to be alone. So do you, I mean? That, I mean, I guess that's the whole point. I mean, do you think that um, you have to get married to prove that to a woman or to prove that to the male, or is cohabitating you know something that I mean is justifiably understood enough to be able to say like okay you don't have to put a ring on it but at least you're still with that person and you can be with that person without having to walk down the aisle well you already said it marriage is putting a period at the end of the sentence so if you are okay to cohabitate and have kids and live together why not just make it legal you know what's what's the issue i've always been i've always been entertained by that idea that people would live together share their money have children, but be unabashed op op in their opposition to marriage. That to me didn't make sense. I don't. I don't get it, because they're basically married. So and well, especially what do they say, like after seven years, you're yeah, you know, it's a common, common law. law. 
Well, and, and even if I, I can, I can, I can understand that somewhat. If both parties are indifferent to the institution of marriage, if you neither of you care, it doesn't matter. But like, right. if if it was important to one person, and the other person was still like, no, I'm not going to do it. It's I never understood what that was about. That the the psychology of of why I'm putting the stop here. <laughs> Everything up, the whole sentence, cool. But that period bugs. I'm not going to. Okay, so just just from my perspective, then, um, imagine being in a relationship for let's say um four or five years haven't had kids yet but you guys have been together for that period of time and you decide to you know move in together but you know you're still just kind of like all right we're doing our careers we're just kind of doing our thing and we haven't had kids yet well that will happen eventually i mean marriage what happens if marriage isn't there i mean do you at what point do you think that marriage is something that you feel like you should have to do or is like that period on the sentence Here, here's my opinion and I, i'm curious to hear amy's on this my opinion is there you, you want to know why the lgbt community has been making such a stink about marriage is because it actually matters in a relationship there is something about the psychology of that commitment wrapped up in a celebratory moment that makes a difference. And it's a sign that from here forward, things are different. When you're cohabitating, you don't have that. And it's not about the specifics of, you know, legally being bound and everything. And, and there's, and that's where the gray area is for me, because you can make it a spectacle and you can make it a celebratory point of commitment, a date, an anniversary or whatever. That's important to a relationship. It, it's It's got to it, it adds value to them because I know for me, like when I look across the table, I see the, I see my wife, my, the, the woman I'm committed to, the woman I love the most, the, the, not the, the, the pinnacle, she, she's it, you know? And I remember with fondness that day where the dude with stinky breath asked us if we wanted to, if, if we were willing to, you know, keep the commitment and, and to have and to hold in, in that whole song and dance. And it was a great, it was a great, it, that, that's a memory for me. And so I think that it, it's, it's not a cut and dried answer in my opinion. It's, it's, a, it's more of a, it's, it's a nuanced thing. Plenty of people, I, th- I think more people get married that, that shouldn't than people that should that don't. Yeah, I agree. I think that it's, you know, all relative to that relationship. I mean, what works for some people doesn't work for another. But if you're in a relationship where one person wants to get married and one person doesn't, you know, that's going to be a constant nagging issue in your relationship. But if you're both content with not getting married, then so be it. That's, you know, it's your right. So, yeah. Well, I, I, uh, we're, we're about ready close to wrap up here. We, you know, thank you, Amy, for being on the show. We're going to end this with a little rapid fire. We got a couple questions for you to kind of sum up everything that we've discussed. So question number one for you, Amy. What is one marital tool that you would suggest to any of those that are looking to improve their relationship or marriage? Um, I guess that you just need to view that person as, you know, you're going to spend the rest of your life with that person. That's going to be the last person that you take to your bed, you know, whatever. You have to keep it exciting. You have to date each other. You have to be open to grow. You have to, you know, just be be present for that person at all times and you know be like i said be willing to just roll with it you have to keep it exciting so the the tool then would be just the openness of yeah, allowance st- stay open a- stay you know be willing to accept change and you know grow okay all right question two what is one piece of advice that you would offer to a single guy or a single woman who is stumbling through the dating world trying to find that that person that they can have a healthy committed relationship with. What's, what's a piece of advice that you would tell that person? Stay off Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. No, I guess that I would say know what you're looking for. You know, if you're really just looking to have sex, then, you know, fine. But if you're really looking for a relationship, make sure that you're looking in the right outlets. You know, I guess. I love it. Yeah. Hmm. hmm. Um... How do you think being in a relationship has helped you grow as a person? Well, you know, we've been through a lot together and 
you know, that stupid phrase that I totally hate, but it's kind of true. Whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger. (laughs) It's true. Like you grow and you know, I'm not, as Bryce said, I haven't been the same person that I was when he first met me and you know, we're constantly changing, we're evolving and that's kind of how life is. So you're either evolving or you're not. And if you're not, you're dying. So, you know, just stay off tender. Yeah. <laughs> so true. So true. And what what is one thing that you feel you would teach your kids well, about I'm t- relationships? Or I'm trying to teach my kids what real love is. You know, there's a difference between, you know, being in love with somebody and, you know, loving somebody. You can be in love. You know, I think that Bryce and I are in love. We are in it together and having love for somebody. I mean, I see too many kids, teenagers, oh, my life is over. My boyfriend dumped me. I'm like, you're, you know, you don't even know what love is, you know. And too many kids these days are, you know, being raised by parents out of wedlock and separate households. And, you know, I think that our ultimate goal is to make sure that our kids at all times are surrounded by parents who love each other and love them and are trying to raise them to have a healthy relationship, you know? That's good advice. Yeah. (laughs) I think uh, with the four personalities we have with our kids, we're going to have a lot of opportunities to teach them a lot of different things when it comes to relationships going forward. Yep. And I guess rule number one, no Tinder. (laughs) Stay or the equivalent those. renamed application in the future that yes. replaces Tinder. I know. I, I keep talking about this, and I really want to live vicariously through Colby and like make him <laughs> join Match just to see what it's like, because that was something that Bryce and I never really you know, experienced, which is fine. I'm happy that I don't have to. Well, but it, It's funny. I was talking to a friend, and I, I don't like dating. I really don't like dating just because it's... It can be awkward sometimes. It yeah. can be awkward. And I, I know for myself, I'm a very sociable person and I'm very, you know, engaging. And I, I, I guess I could say I'm a good guy and I have all that. But it's just, I mean, it's that intro part. It's that beginning part that's always kind of just like... Letting your guard down. Part. Hi, I'm Colby. Um, I'm dope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, hard, the hard part, though, is that social engagements truly equal power. I mean, yeah. the networking and everything, and sometimes you just happen to. Well, and a sad fact, too. It's like, I, I could say three out of the last four girls that I've dated have approached me in some regards, not vice versa. And it's, I mean, some people can joke and say, you know, no, he's a pussy, but I, I don't know. I just, for some reason, it just has happened that way, and I, I don't know. But you just have to be willing to put yourself out there, Colby. That's all, you know, put it out there. And if they, if they don't like it, then fine. You learn from it. And but not well, everybody you, likes chocolate. No, you're, you're uh, a, <laughs> whatever. You're in Utah, dude. Mm-hmm. You see the number of mixed babies floating around this place. Brings out a girl to the yard. <laughs> well, you, you step onto a, an interesting, uh, concept that transcends all relationships. And that is the fear of rejection. And, you know, even, even in, a long-term committed monogamous relationship, you know, rejection is still a big deal. Nobody wants to get squashed or be felt at, or, or be perceived as less than or not enough or insufficient or whatever. And so it's even worse at the beginning where you, you only have a sliver of knowledge about who the person really is based off of their, you know, your first impression or second impression or banter on a date or <laughs> how they are when they've had a couple drinks or whatever it is. I mean, it's, I totally get that it's difficult to, to really open up and be real. But like I said, thankfully I don't have to deal with that. Well, I'll be using a compatibility test soon enough <laughs> to be able to hopefully make that a little less awkward. <laughs> well, I, I, I think that's about it for us. Uh, again, Amy, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. You're um, welcome. You, for your you, perspective. You, yeah. It's, I mean, with some great stuff. Hopefully here. we can, you know, help, one listener out there, you know. The one listener. <laughs> the yeah. one. Hi, Barry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, there'll be there'll be two before too long, and then three, and then four. So. <laughs> anyway, that's it. Thanks everybody for listening, and uh, adios. Enjoy the next one. What's going on, everyone? It's Trent Alvinson, a.k.a. Sixth Sense. Thanks for tuning in to the Talking to Myself podcast. 
join us again next week for another ride. In the meantime, make sure to check out our website at talkingtomyself.com as well as our Instagram and Twitter at T2M Podcast. Until next time, take it a day at a time. <laughs>